The next form we're going to look at is known as ternary form. Ternary form. And it's another way of structuring a piece of music. So if we imagine a piece of music that starts here and ends here, when we write a piece in ternary form, what we're going to do is break up this piece of music into three main sections. So try and draw these somewhere in the middle. There we go. And so it gives us three main sections. And so that's the big difference between binary form and ternary form. Binary had two main sections, A and B. Here in ternary form, we have three sections. So we start off with what we call the A section, which is where the music is introduced and the key is established and all this kind of thing and we'll get to the end of that and then we'll have something different we'll have a contrasting section and this is known as the B section like that and we might have music in a different key it'll certainly have a different character the idea of the B section in a ternary form piece is to give a good sense of contrast something different and then at the end of that we will return back to our A material again and that gives us a really good sense of journey and conclusion so in a way the form is still ultimately doing the same job in that it's setting something up for us it's getting us established in a certain key and a certain character and then it's taking us away from that key and character normally and giving us something different and then we return back to something relatively familiar now it might not be exactly the same we tend to find in ternary form pieces when we get here and we return back to the familiar a material again it's not exactly the same. Sometimes composers throw in a few new ideas or change things up a little bit so you're not completely bored with something you've just heard exactly the same as earlier on in the music. You get something slightly different. So sometimes we just say this is actually a dash. We put a little dash there to say, well, it's it's kind of, you know, it's obviously the same idea. It's the same character. It's the same music, but it might not be note for note the same. So where might you hear a ternary form structure being used in music? Well, actually, one of the best places to find one is in something known as a minuet and trio. And while we'll look at symphony form in due course, minuets and trios are very, very popular as the third movement of a symphony. In a symphony, we normally have a first movement, which is very grand and very dramatic and has a lot of musical ideas in there. And the second movement tends to be slow and lyrical and beautiful, the opportunity for a composer to show us his best melodies. And then here in the third movement, we have something that's just a bit of fun. It's just a bit lighter and it's using these uh, forms of minuet and trio, which were earlier, they were dance forms. So they were styles of dance music, which composers later on kind of borrow to use in their symphonies as a bit of light relief. And what we have is we have some music that begins the, the movement, which is the A material, and it will have a certain character. And then at the end of that, we might hear that repeated several times. You know, we hear the music relatively often. Then something very, very different will happen. It might even be a change of key. It might be a change of time signature. We'll get this thing called the trio. And it is a real contrast to the minuet. And that would be our B section material. And then after we've heard that, often with repeats, so we'll hear some of the ideas a few times, we end up going back and hearing the minuet again. And that's kind of a really, really standard form that you'll hear again and again in symphonies by Haydn and Mozart and Beethoven, these kind of classical and early romantic composers using the minuet and trio, um, which has this very, very clear ternary form to it.